Welcome to the meeting of the Finance and Assets Committee. And I would particularly like to welcome those watching on the live stream. Agenda item number one is public question time. Do we have any questions? No? Okay. Thank you. Agenda item number two, uh, apologies and substitutions. I mean, Hannah, do we have any? Uh, we have apologies from Councillor David Brown and we have Councillor David Ambrose Smith here as a substitute. Uh, agenda item number three, uh, declarations of interest. Any members have any interest to declare for any items on the agenda? I'll go first as I have a uh, declaration of interest on item number nine. So, um, and I shall have to leave the room at that time. Councillor Hunt? Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, as asset champion, I, I, I declare that I've had an informal discussions or discussion with the applicant. Uh, however, uh, I retain an open mind and I won't make my mind up until I've heard all the facts. So I will be, I won't be leaving the room and I won't be, uh, I'll be taking part in the uh, debate. Um, which item number is that, Mr. Councillor? Item number 10. Thank you. Councillor Goldsack? No. Nope. Any other members? Thank you. That means leads us to agenda item number four, the minutes. Uh, we need to approve the minutes of the meeting held on 24th November. Any member raised to need to raise any issues on that or are we able to approve? Excellent. I will propose that. Do I have a seconder for the minutes? Anyone? Oh. Councillor Bailey. Uh, agenda item number five, Chairman's announcements. Uh, there are none this time. So we move to item for decision. And the first of those, agenda item number six, which is the annual treasury management strategy. And if I could ask Ian Smith to introduce the item, please, Ian. Thank you, Chair. Committee is asked to recommend to full council the approval of the treasury management strategy. The council continues to hold a high level of cash balances, which means that all borrowing during the MTFS period will be from internal sources meaning no external borrowing will be required. With the increased rates of interest available on balances, the Treasury function is budgeting to bring in a significant additional interest in 23-24, which is assisting in balancing the Council's budget in that year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ian. I'm happy to propose. Do I have a seconder? Happy to second, Chair. Reserve my right. Councillor Bailey. Uh, any questions to Ian from the Council members? Councillor Whelan. Thank you. Thank you for the report. Um, just looking at the bottom of point 3.3, 3, the council has currently loaned East Cam's trading company 4.9 million in relation to the loan agreement approved by the council. Are we happy that the 7.5 million is going to be enough to see them, bearing in mind the repayments that they have due on the 31st of March? <coughs> Um, I'm having regular discussions with the finance manager at ECTC and the current position is that that will be plenty, uh, enough money at that point, yes. Just one other small point on page four, appendix one, item three in the middle, it um, uses the term CFR. It would be useful if, um, <clears throat> excuse me, initials could be um, defined when they're first used. Makes it an awful lot easier to read. So if I can refer to point two point two, it is actually referred to there in the in the report. Sorry, Ian, can you just clarify that? Sorry, in two point two of the appendices. Ah, if it's, it's just. Sorry. No. Thank you, Councillor Wheeler. 
Are there any other questions? We're happy to recommend. Any anyone want to debate this point? I think we're happy with that. So therefore, go to the vote. All I say in favour. Unanimous. Yeah. Thank you, members. Agenda item seven, the revenue budget. Uh, can I ask Ian Smith so to introduce this item? And <clears throat> therefore, I also need a proposal and a second. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Chair. Committee is asked to recommend to full council that the budget, subject to the changes as in paragraph 2.2, be approved. By use of the surplus savings reserve, the council has a balanced budget for Chair, two years. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I reserve my right to speak. Sorry. By use of the surplus savings reserve, the council has a balanced budget for two years. 20 2023 and 20, 23, 24 and 24, 25. The council is making no real changes to the service it provides to the residents of East Cams in 23, 24. So the changes in costs detailed in this report mostly reflect price variations. And just to update members on appendix five, we currently are awaiting just one parish precept, which is will be termed at a parish meeting on the 1st of February. So all those will be available for the council meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ian. Uh, can we now have a proposal and a seconder? Happy to propose, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hunt, for seconding. Do we have any questions for Ian? Councillor Whelan. Just another minor technical thing, which I was just trying to find out with all these appendices, it's always quite um, um, just on Appendix 1A, um, we're looking at the budget for 2022-23, surely we would now be really look, wanting to look at the forecast on that sheet so that we're, we're comparing the latest view of the budget rather than something that was considered a year ago. I mean, historically, this is always the way we presented it. The 22-23 is the budget which was approved the previous year. And obviously, it, variations from that budget are recorded in the finance report, which you get later in the agenda. I appreciate that. But when actually looking at it, it would be the normal way that you would expect to see things is what the forecast is as opposed to. So you're comparing um, effectively what we expect things to be with what we're budgeting as opposed to um what effectively was a guess last year okay thank you i will just come back again on same issue 10.7 here you're saying that um, 1.7 million of the ectc facility is going to be um, not going to be called till 23 24 um are you still satisfied that there is sufficient then bearing in mind the 4.9 which has already been drawn down um to meet all of the obligations that exist on the 31st of March. The, uh, as I said previously, the amount which was available for drawdown in um, the current year is, I think 5.6 million in memory. Um, yeah, 5.6 million. So there is another 700,000 available for the company in the current year. And my understanding is that continues to be a figure which they expect to be um, available to fund the business at that point. Councillor Trapp. Sorry, a very small point. Bottom of page six on item seven. Um, it should be reached rather than reach, I think. Have now reached. Page six. 
agenda item seven. Thank you, Councillor Trout. <laughs> Do we have any other further questions there? Now go into the debate. Councillor Bailey. Thank, thank you very much, Chairman. And uh, I'm very, very pleased to be proposing uh, such an excellent uh, draft budget. And I want to uh, place on record uh, our massive thanks to uh, Ian and the man whole management team and all of the staff who uh, contribute to making this budget possible. Um, and it is the tradition that we... Um, and normal, I think, that we present uh, the medium term financial plan in the manner that is set out on Appendix 1A so that we can compare easily with what the budget was set at last year and what it is set at this year. So I'm I'm very comfortable with the, the way that it's been presented. Um, so this budget does propose uh, directly to that, that we recommend to full council that we do freeze council tax again for the forthcoming financial year 2023-24. That will be the 10th year in a row that this district authority has frozen its share of the council tax bills for our residents. Uh, I recognise it's a, a relatively modest contribution in, in the great scheme of council tax bills, which are increasingly expensive for residents. Uh, £142.14 for a band D property in 2013 uh, and remaining at £142.14 for a band D property in 2023. And I think this council can be proud that it offers um, excellent value for money uh, from, from that income. Uh, and at a time, obviously, uh, when... The county council led by uh, the Lib liberal democrat party is proposing to increase its council tax by the maximum 4.99 percent that the law allows uh, alongside other precepting authorities and including for the first time ever uh, the labor mayor of the combined authority who's proposing to add a precept to council tax bills for the first time uh, this council remains committed to our pledge, which is to only raise council tax if it is required and needed. And it's not that we're ideologically welded to not raising council tax, but it's as required and we don't need it. Uh, you know, and I think taking money from people's pockets with the force of law, uh, particularly in the current cost, cost of living crisis that people are suffering from, uh, without doing every single thing possible to avoid it is, is lazy and it's too easy and, and, and frankly it's wrong. Um, so thank you to, to the careful stewardship of this authority and the carefully planned and managed uh, increase in commercial activity that's been undertaken for the benefit of our communities in providing high quality housing and parks and open spaces uh, management and, um, you know, the, the successful markets programme. And, and thanks to that activity, you know, that has supported our medium term financial plan. It's exactly what we set out to do. Uh, and it is what has happened. Uh, and therefore, we don't need to raise council tax, so nor should we. Uh, we've got a balanced budget for the next two financial years, uh, which has long been the tradition of this authority, so that we are not, uh, you know, facing huge budget gaps in the next financial year, which all other authorities, I do believe, are in Cambridgeshire. I think we're the only still the only authority in Cambridgeshire to have a balanced budget two years in advance. And that has really stood us in, in good stead. And it's a fantastic practice that we've managed through all the years of, uh, you know, more difficult finances for, for local government. We've, we've managed to carry on doing that. We've got zero external borrowing. Uh, that is also a very good practice where it is possible. We've just uh, agreed the Treasury um, management uh, plan um, and that has stood us in, in incredibly good stead uh, and I think particularly uh, now with increasing costs of external borrowing that's that's got to be a good thing. Uh, we've got healthy 10% reserves in our general reserves fund and uh, you know we've just seen it through the treasury management strategy significant investments uh, via the the, the the treasury management plan um and uh that includes you know the loan to east cam's trading company which does actually bring in uh interest uh, to this organization um we've made in the treasury through the through the um capital strategy we've got provision for uh, purchase of black wheelie bins uh, and new waste fleets so there's um good provision in there for the forthcoming waste changes uh, that we need to make uh, and that are coming through the government's waste and resources strategy. Um, and uh, the loan to East Cam's trading com com 
East Kansas Trading Company will uh, facilitate the delivery of new housing for, for uh, our residents. That will include affordable housing at the former swimming pool site in the, uh, next to Paradise Car Park in the form of 100k homes. Uh, and on the MOD site on phases two and three, uh, in, which will include, the plan is to include affordable homes for rent as well. Um, and obviously the council will receive interest on that loan. Um, and the benefits to date from East Cam's trading company via, you know, the, the stuff arising from the new homes that have been delivered, the interest charges and the reduction in the parks and open spaces contract uh, are were scheduled to be uh, 4.7 million at the end of this financial year in April. So, you know, in the in the scheme of comparison with council tax rises, you know, that is a very significant sum that could never have been hoped to have, have been collected through council tax receipts. Uh, there's work to do on, on the surplus savings reserve for years three and four of the medium term financial plan that work needs to start now uh, as, as, it, as it is an ongoing, ongoing process. So I'm um, very happy to uh, recommend this to full council chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Uh, Councillor Hunt, do you wish to? I've forgotten there are speakers. Okay, it won't take very long because I've made a load of notes here, Chair, uh, and Councillor Bailey's covered almost every one. Um, uh, and I, 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 what I didn't hear was whether or not she said we, we're not putting, where we do charge for car parking, we're not uh, suggesting any rise in that. Um, and, and therefore that's nil. And of course we will um, continue to have the uh, free car park in the city and town centres, which I think is appreciated by very many people. And as I speak to people, they all love it. Uh, and so we intend to do this. And I'm, I haven't got the facts uh, in writing in, to, to hand, but I, I have been told by two or three people that going 10 years without uh, increasing council tax is actually a national record. I, before we start, blowing our trumpets and I would we'd need to check it uh, but I believe that to be the case and uh, and I and I would just repeat what Councillor Bailey said in that I, I think we're very fortunate in having a, a a wonderful team working on on this budget and uh, backed by uh, led led by him beautifully and and backed by his staff and we do owe them and the people of East Towns owe them a thank you thank you chair Thank you, Councillor Hunt. <clears throat> On that basis, and I think we can now go to a vote. All those happy to recommend. Those against? Any abstentions? That's six votes in favour, no votes against, and four abstentions. Thank you. That leads us on to agenda, agenda item eight, the Little Port High Street Renewable Capital Grant Fund scheme. If I could ask Martin to Smith to introduce. Welcome, Martin. Working. <laughs> The uh, Littleport High Street Renewal Capital Grant Fund scheme, uh, members are being asked to approve the scheme eligibility criteria, an application form that can be found at Appendix 1, and delegate authority to a, a business development manager and the chairman of the Finance and Assets Committee to open the fund as detail. <clears throat> um, I will remind members that we had a similar scheme, uh, which was approved on the 4th of October, um, for Ely, um, although a slightly larger scale. Uh, this application, pleased to report, also includes a map, which was asked for previously. Um, and that's kind of the introduction complete, really. Thank you, Martin. Uh, can I have a proposer for this recommendation? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Ambrose Smith. Um, I'm happy to second on the vote, and I reserve the right. 
Do we have any questions for Martin? Councillor Whelan, sorry. I just, only, only one small point really. On um, 4.5, it actually says, um, we'll open the fund from 6th of February and close on the 10th of March. In the event that the fund is fully utilised before the close date, the council reserves the right to close the fund. If you look at criteria 10, it actually states that all applications will be assessed following the closing date. Um, so that seems to be a little bit of contradiction in the wording. I think we'll correct that. Apologies, that should be uh, as per the uh, as per the um, four point. Was it four point five? Yeah. And so surely we would want it the other way around, so that they're assessed. They would then be in accordance with the actual SOAM proposal, which is so. The proposal is is that we close the on the day that the phone closes. What we tend to do is look at the applications. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It works so four point five says that you will look at them prior to that, and you may close it prior to that date. Whereas the criteria ten would then be correct. I beg your pardon. Sorry. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, sorry, that's I absolutely fine. I misread it myself. Sorry. Just wanted to make sure we haven't got any. Yes, it's the same as so. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was expecting. No special treatment. So we've clarified that. That will get changed, Martin. Yes. Any other questions? Uh, Councillor Amber Smith. Just, just an observation, Chair. Uh, the bids close on the 10th of March. If the there are not sufficient bids, or if there are the bids don't total the £75,000, will you be able to have another tranche at a, a later stage without coming back to this committee? I think what we're up against um, is timing. So we have um, indications from the combined authority who have obviously given us the money under this, uh, the Market Town programme that um, they are looking to close down on applications beyond March um, of this year. I haven't had that in writing, but that's kind of a concern that we have. Um, and the money must be spent by March of next year. So I can't fully, I, I think, answer that question. I think, Chairman, what we need to do is, is work collectively to ensure that as yeah. many people know that this bid is out there and that it does have a genuine deadline on it. Of course, if there's ever time to go back out and still meet the combined authority's end stop date, we will do. But the likelihood is that given the timescales that we're up against, it's important that everyone's aware that this bid is available and that they get the applications in now so that they don't miss an opportunity to get funds in. Thank you, Chairman. I agree with what you've said because I wouldn't dare do any otherwise. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I would like it minuted, I'm sure it will be minuted, that you will look at, there will be a second tranche if the time allows us to do so. Thank you. Councillor Harris. I, I think what this suggests to us, given the fact that time is very short, is that the councillors living in Littleport and whose commitment to Littleport has been a shining light over the past four years, needs to tramp those mean streets and get the people signing up and putting their applications in. It would be a bad thing if this money is not fully spent. It needs to be fully utilised, so let's get the people coming up with ideas and putting in their applications. They deserve the money, they need the money, let's get them the money. Thank you for your support, uh, Councillor Harris. That's very much appreciated. And thanks for that direction because I hadn't given that any thought at all. Do we have any other questions for Martin? Thank you, Martin. Uh, and therefore we go into a debate if anyone has any points. Okay, in which case let's go to the vote. Those in favor of the recommendation. That's unanimous. Thank you. That brings us on to item 10. I shall now leave the room.
Members, we need to elect a chairman for this item, given that Councillor Bobbindon is unable to, to remain in the room. Um, do I have any nominations for chair? Councillor Bailey. Proposed Councillor Julia Huffer. Is there a seconder? Okay, seconded by Councillor Amber Smith. Do I have any other nominations? No. We go to the vote for Councillor Huffer for chair. Unanimous. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Councillor Huffer, you preside over this item. Thank you. Um, item number 10 to approve the nine, beg your pardon, uh, um, agenda item number nine to approve the Soham High Street Renewal Capital Fund grant scheme. Um, if you could present um, to us, please, Martin. Thank you, Chair. Again, this is um, similar and scheme to the previous and the yearly scheme. Uh, High Street Renewal Scheme, we are asking approval of the scheme eligibility again. Form Appendix 1 and agree that the fund will open on the 6th of February and close on the Friday, the 10th of March. Um, that's kind of that, that, that's, that's simply that. Yes, <laughs> yes. we're going to whiz through this today, aren't we? Uh, do I have a proposal for this item? Yes. That's Councillor Goldsack, and I'm happy to second from the chair. Do we have any questions of the officer regarding this? Councillor Ambrose Smith. Thank you, Martin. The, the, the fund is £20,000. Your bidding process allows you to go between £500,000 and the £20,000. Is that correct? Yeah, £500,000. Mm -hmm. no, so some one, one individual business to take it all in one go. That's the proposal here. Okay. Just to remind members, this is the, again, this is a product of, this is the second time this will have been out to do that. We've already done it once. So this is the second time we're going out to try and spend all that money. Dupre. That was going to be my question. And my, my supplementary <laughs> to that was going to be why? <laughs> why why are we setting up? Um, do we have someone in mind? Are we setting up one, one organisation to take the whole amount? It does seem quite extraordinary to me that, that we are foreseeing just one organisation taking the entire pot. When we were considering this, what we wanted to do was align all three schemes to the same um, criteria. Um, so what we've done on each of the schemes is, um, as you recall, maybe from the yearly one as well, it was grants between 500 and 20,000. Um, for that reason, that's why we've included it in here to be consistent. But the, the total pot isn't the same in each case. Could you repeat that, sorry? But the total pot is not the same size. The total pot case? is reduced because it's it's not the same size. No. It, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Just to try and assist members, um, obviously there you could reduce the upper limit if you wish to. That's that's not a problem. But I think one of the things when Martin and I were discussing the the issues that having the scheme is perhaps there was a bigger um, scheme out there that wasn't coming forward because the threshold was much lower. So in order to try and overcome that potential issue, and it is purely a potential issue, and as Martin said, to try and realign it back to what the other schemes are offering, that we put the upper limit of 20,000. But if members wish, we can reduce that cap because it's there is no one that we're aware of that's saying, I need 20,000, therefore that should be the cap. Thank you, Chair. That's the goal, sir. Questions, uh, Martin, just, just to be absolutely clear about this, and you answered this on the little board one, and I think I understood it, that we're actually running the program for the allocated dates and then thereafter you're going to go through the applications to determine the best fitting uh, applicants yes That's correct any further questions of martin in which case then shall we move to the debate anybody have anything they would like to say councillor bailey yeah, just to say, I mean, I'm, you know, this is the second, I think it's important to be clear, this is the second time we will have been out inviting bids. 
uh, and I think what's most important is that we utilize this money for the good of SOAM. And therefore, if we happen to get, you know, what we don't want to do is say we're going to limit it to bids of an upper level of 10,000. And that puts somebody out of the running that might have wanted to put a bid and we might end up with no bids at all. So it would be better to end up with one bid for 20,000, if that happens to be what comes forward and actually get the money utilized, um, than, than restricting people and putting out a bid that, that where somebody might have wanted to or needed to spend the 20,000. So for me, I think it's better that we just try and get this money out there to, to the benefit of SOAM than, than making restrictions on it. And the process will do the rest because if we get five bids in and one of them is for 20,000, then the bids will be scored. Uh, and the winning bids will go forward up to the amount of funding that's available. So uh, I think it's pretty straightforward, really. I'm very content with it. Harris and then Councillor Trapp. I just wanted to check. I mean, obviously, we'd all noted that this was the second time this this kind of scheme had had, had covered some. Do we understand, and I'm sorry if I'm very slow on the uptake here, but do we understand that the first time round, the money was not fully spent? and that we're running this in order to make sure, okay, th fine, then then yeah, I am all for making sure that um, the money is, is fully deployed and we should have maximum flexibility. So I don't have a problem with it, just mm -hmm. wanted to understand it, that's all. So, Trap. So just a small point about uh, the recommendations, uh, 2.1 Little Room and 2. Is it going to be the same criteria that um, actually the fund will close on the 10th of March and then all the bids will be assessed rather than what it says here that it's inconsistent again? Can I just be assured of that? Councillor Trapp, I think we do need to change the recommendation in that case so that it, it, it marries up with um, agenda item number eight. Yes. Is that we'll receive all the bids and then, and then assess. Then assess. Yes. Rather than the first one in gets it. Yeah. Gets it. Yeah. I think I think you just amend the record. You amend the recommendation, uh, chair, just to stop it and close on Friday, March tenth, two thousand twenty-three. Yes. Full stop. Yeah. And just take out the rest, okay. chair. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Hunt. Thank you, chair. I I I totally agree with Councillor Harris. So he, he's put it perfectly, and I don't think we should do anything that restricts this. Uh, operation and the money wants to be spent for the benefit of local residents and so I totally agree with him on back it. So if I go back to the recommendation then we are there. Has everybody got, had everything they want to say? Oh Councillor Ambrose Smith, beg your pardon. Just go back to my point on the last item regarding a third tranche for so on. So if the £20,000 isn't spent they give them a chance to have another time, as long as the time scale permits. Yeah, well, can't let some down, can you? In which case then, members, we are, the recommendation is to approve the scheme, eligib oh, I can't speak, eligibility criteria and application form at Appendix 1. And the uh, second item is to agree that the fund will be opened on Monday, the 6th of February and close on Friday, the 10th of March, 2023. Full stop. Are we all happy with that? Do I need a proposer and a seconder, Emma, or is that just, yes. Do I need to amend? Yes, so I could have a proposal for the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Goldsack. Councillor Hunt, you're seconding? <laughs> Councillor Ambrose. Smith. Councillor Ambrose Smith is seconding. I beg your pardon. Sorry, Councillor Harris, I didn't see you there. Put your hand up. Beg your pardon. Um, in which case then, can we move to the vote, please? All in favour? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Huffer. Uh -huh. 
That leads us on to agenda item 10, the uh, Willow Walk proposal. Um, I have a, I'm not sure the wording for this, revised wording proposal that I'd like to read out, which is at 2-1. Uh, members are requested to agree the grant of a license to Cathedral View Childcare Limited of the land at Willow Walk, Ely, on the terms detailed in paragraph 3.5 of the report, save that the words, at a monthly rental of 500 pounds, no VAT, are substituted with a monthly rental to be assessed by an independent valuation. And point two, authorise the direct legal and monitoring officer in consultation with the chairman to proceed accordingly. I'm happy to propose this from the chair. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Goldsack. So Maggie, if you could present this now. Um, I don't really have anything to add to the report. It's uh, simply we had a request from Cathedral View Childcare to use some uh, land at Willow Walk in Ely. The, the land at Willow Walk hasn't been used for many years. Uh, it's, I'm not sure if members have managed to carry out a site visit, but it's covered with some large trees with a grassed area to the begin to the, to the forefront. Um, and it's uh, with a, pro a proposal to set up a forest school to teach children to respect and conserve the environment whilst learning in the great outdoors. Um, happy to take any questions. Members, any questions? Counter trap. Um, will there be a need for fencing around it, and who will actually pro provide the fencing? If so, being a school. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, I've actually set out at three point five that um, the responsibility for fencing. There is some fencing there at the moment, but um, it is proposed that there will be further fencing, which will be erected, and the nursery have confirmed that they will um, okay, maintain that. And that's the question yeah. I was asking. Councillor Harris. Is there anyone from the applicant actually here that we can talk to? I understand that Mr and Mrs Pearson are actually in the audience. Okay, fine. Then I'd be interested in hearing. It's from not them. normal meeting procedure. Yeah, it's not normal practice. Uh, there, I think the, the members are here just purely to observe conversation. Just to, just to say one more thing about this um i'm sure most of us are entirely supportive of the concept of a forest school um as it happens i know the one at at westwick because my grandson goes there and um and has benefited enormously from it but i also know that it requires a very high level of professionalism, very high level of expert staffing, and a great deal of emphasis on, on safety, safeguarding and physical safety, which I'm sure the applicants must know about. So my um, assumption here is that there will be a planning application which will be absolutely exhaustive and will require a great deal of information, but this is not that meeting. Therefore, um, we best, better just um, leave it till the proper time. But uh, sorry, that was actually not particularly helpful, so I apologize. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Harris, that's noted. Uh, Councillor Tramp? Yeah, just further question on 3.5, uh, the use of the parking area. How big is it and why, why does the council need it? 
Is there any, I mean, just fill in the background. <laughs> I've never used it. I understand from Spencer that um, during Aquafest, the, um, the organisers of Aquafest have actually used the front grassed area just to sort of put some surplus. Um, it's not actually been used like, as public parking. It's actually just been used for some vehicles from Aquafest when they're setting up just for some storage. And obviously the council would like to sort of retain that just in case it's needed. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions before I go to the proposal? Do you want me to speak as a seconder? Thank you, Chair. Um, I think we owe a huge debt to people that set up their businesses in this field. I think the childcare wraparound care market is a tough market. I think it's a very, uh, I think Councillor Harry's put it very nicely, actually, he'd be probably self-deprecating, but he put it very nicely. It's a minefield. And I think any professional that comes into this area uh, should be backed and applauded. Um, I'm very pleased to see that the, uh, the changed thing, because to me, it actually gives, makes it very clear, very clean. And we as a local council, whilst we're very supportive and, and want to support uh, Cathedral and their, and their approach here, we can't be seen to be given any advantage to one wraparound care organisation after another. So that's why that's why we've done uh, the change. But for me, I think this is a, a green light. And um, despite what Councillor Harry says, I wish you well with the journey, <laughs> uh, as, as I'm sure he does as well, uh, uh, from here on in. And um, I, I commend it for support. Councillor Hunt. I don't want to risk speaking at the wrong time. Are we? Uh, I thought we were still on questions to the officer. Is that correct? We're in debate. We're in debate now. In which case, could I speak? Yes, you may, Councillor. Thank Hunt. you very much indeed. I'd really like to say how enthusiastic I am towards this application. Uh, I think it's been actually, if we, we're critical of ourselves, this plot of land uh, has been unused for many, many years. And there was a plan to in. Uh, increase the size and the capacity and move the sewage works and there, there may be a, a use for this land in, in many years to come but I, I hope and believe the, um, that the Cathedral View will take this over and I can already see the children's faces as they play with butterflies and find bunny rabbits and, 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 I, and I'm really so enthusiastic for it. It's worthy of note that many of the houses in the area have relatively small gardens uh, and there's not too many trees about and so therefore I think this this becomes more valuable every day and uh, I think the business about the car parking has been put to rest it's not regularly used for car parking but there are the odd occasions when there's a function on the uh, green that's nearby and something like the Aquafest or the Eel, uh, uh, Eel Day may may require a bit of parking or a trailer to be parked up. So therefore, that's been included there. But I, I would say I'm totally in favour of this, and I agree with the amendment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. Uh, Councillor Huffer. Just to say that I, I wish the Cathedral um, all the best. I know that in Fordham, we uh, the primary school opened a, a, a forest school um, to help with the mental. Um, effect of COVID and lockdowns has had on on even primary school children um, and I'm told it has already started to markedly improve behaviour um, and and children's mental welfare so I wish them well and um, I hope that they brings joy to many children in the future. Councillor Harris. Well, I would like to put on record my great pleasure at twice in 15 minutes um, agreeing Councillor Hunt. I, I, th I think it's first, but, but, but all the better for that. As far as this proposal is concerned, I do, I do have a profound personal interest in it. My, my grandson is very high on the autistic spectrum and um, um, it, it has been a great struggle to find places where he can feel safe and comfortable. And the Forest School has been an ideal setting and it has done undoubtedly been 
immensely beneficial to him. So in terms of good wishes and enthusiasm, yes, absolutely. I, I, I send you my very best wishes for this. I wouldn't underestimate, and I'm sure you as professionals don't underestimate the, the amount that has to go into it, but um, it's a great endeavor and I hope it comes to fruition. So good luck. Do we have any other comments from councillors? Councillor David Ember Smith. Recess. Bill, Bill has asked for a recess after this uh, after this agenda item to get over the praise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, councillors. I think on that basis, I think we can go to the vote. All of those in favour? No surprise, unanimous. And I wish you well with your project. That leads us on to agenda item seven, which is items now simply for noting. The finance report. I uh, can ask Ian Smith to introduce this item. Ian. Thank you, Chair. The current projection is that the Council will have a net underspend of 191,000 at the end of the financial year. As can be seen in the report, the net underspend is a result of a number of spend variations on a number of services. These, where they relate to the Finance Assets Committee, being detailed in table 3.6. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ian. Are we happy to note? Any questions for Ian first? No questions, therefore we're happy to note. Noted, thank you, Ian. Item 12 is the assets update. Uh, Spence, if I could ask you back. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thank you, Chairman. Uh, just bear with me a sec. Right, thank you, Chairman. Uh, as the report uh, clearly says, the depot improvements are coming along quite nicely, and uh, we're moving forward uh, really well on that. So I'm really quite pleased. I'd just like to raise one other little highlight, which just sort of shows the diversity we have to go through with the assets. We have replaced seven concrete streetlights with throughout the district actually. Um, they were discovered on a recent audit that we have these seven uh, concrete pillars that need to be replaced. They are now replaced with modern steel ones, which obviously are much safer if the car impacts with, with them. So that's quite, quite good. Um, just a slight note that actually we put the cost of that in other spend and it should have gone in with the streetlight expenditure, but we'll make sure that's amended next time round. Um, that's completes my quick update, Chairman, but happy to try and take any questions if we have any. Any questions? Oh, Mark, uh, uh, Councillor Mark, come on. Spencer, I'm not quite sure this is the right time, but I, I will raise it as you've just jogged my memory. As a regular user of um, Barton Car Park, um, could I ask you at your next available time to double check the spacings because car sizes are greatly different by the sizes of the uh, car parks mark. I know that because I'm not built to park, to climb over from my uh, passenger side to get into my driver's side, but I regularly have to do if I'm in a certain car park space. There's a number of them that are different sizes. Uh, noted and I'll Thank check you. Uh, Ed Spence, I also noticed, we'll come back to Councillor Hunt, I noticed uh, today as I was in the hive, uh, the hive the cinema, um, parking that uh, there's two that have been demolished of the steel ones. I don't know if they're on your list. So is that an actual cinema parking, the yes. high part? Yeah. So that's not ours, but I can uh, okay. pass that on to the point. I'm Come sure on. they know about it. Councillor Hunt. Yes, thank you. Are you asking me to speak, Chair? Yes, you had your hand. Thank up. you. Um, I'd just like to, it's not really a question, it's more of a comment. I'd just like to thank Spencer for another year of high level of cooperation and as asset champion, I've worked with him quite a lot. And there, uh, there's a lot of items that never hit these uh, agendas and aren't, aren't mentioned, 
But I mean, I can just think immediately of two, which is one, the improved disabled car parking in Broad Street, which was a disgrace and is now beautiful. And also the extra uh, public park parking spaces we have got at Newnham Street and, and even a little rest area there. And these are the sort of improvements that are going on all the time. Uh, and and the, the large amount of the credit for that should go to Spencer Clark. I'd just like it minuted. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. Councillor Amber Smith. Thank you, Chair. This question is a little bit of a risk of upsetting our uh, asset chairman. Uh, it needs to do with Littleport. I noticed that the old barn, you've not spent anything this particular period. So they had an emergency exit fitted. Where do, when will that be on? We see that on the report. Uh, the parish council paid for the emergency exits did for their cells. Did they? Well done. Well done. <laughs> That's pleased, Councillor Hunt. Thank you. That's an even better result for the council. Um, any other questions of Martin? Spencer, sorry, Spencer. Just because Martin sits there so often. Many thanks, Spencer. Yeah, everybody. Thank you. Agenda item number 13 is the forward agenda plan. Hannah, if you could introduce this one. Um, there's nothing to add to what's there, Chairman, at the moment. Thank you. Any questions on the forward agenda plan? Thank you. That now leads us to the exempt. Oh, sorry, well, Councillor. Apologies, I was slightly, slightly. Um, off the thing there. I was just going to ask, when, when are we going to see the crematorium plans on the agenda? Through you, Chairman. Um, I've spoken to Isabel Edgar's now leading on this the Director of Operations. I believe that um, they are just finalising the cost refresh exercise and offers a meeting to discuss this next week. So once that's happened, we'll ask her to update members on when that's happening. Thank you, Chair. We're now moving to the exempt items. Any member doesn't agree with exclusion of the public, including representatives of the press, can they let me know now? In which case, I'd like to thank those watching the live stream as this concludes the public part of the meeting.